if you are out there in Facebook world and you're not here yet, please hurry up and get here. You have five minutes. <laughs> um, let's go over a few announcements. We've got a few things going on or coming up here quick, and I just want to make sure everybody's aware of them. This one, hot off the presses, sent to me this morning. Uh, hello, parents. We're going to start practicing for the children's Christmas program starting September 18th. Yes, it is hard to believe, but that will be here soon. Um, the kids will be down with me practicing every Sunday other than the second Sunday when they're in children's church up here, service up here. The play we're doing this year puts a little spin on the nativity scene, nativity story. Sorry, I should have proofread. The kids will be picking which part they would like to play. There isn't a lot of speaking parts, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, if your child prefers not to have one, the parts that we need filled are Mary, Joseph, animals, wise men, the star, angels, and shepherds. Um, if you have any costumes, anything like that, please, if any questions, don't hesitate to text or call. This is Elisa Blevins, and her number is on here. There are actually little flyers in the back. I think David Raines was handing them out. I think Elisa probably still has some flyers. So these are coming up soon for children's department. So if you have a child in the children's department, you'll be practicing here soon, starting September 18th. Uh, grief support group is still meeting on Thursdays at 7, 6.30 to 7.30. Um, Wayne Benner is in charge of that. We just had men's group yesterday, and that was an awesome time to get together. Um, and then the rest of this stuff is going to sound like I'm pitching the youth group, and that's all I'm doing, but um, it is kind of all I'm doing. So... <laughs> Today, if you are, if you are a sixth grader, hey, 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 shh, power with the mic. Um, if you are in sixth grade to twelfth grade, you are now welcome. Group, hey, sorry, got to give it up to the sound guys. They got the power in the back, so. Um, today we are celebrating a teen parent picnic. It's a chance for us to get a chance to know each family that's coming in, the new families that are here, um, some of the old families, just to get a chance to get together and have fun. But it's also for you parents to celebrate the fact that your children are returning to school this week. Yay! No kids like that at all. They all kind of gave me a dirty look. So um, it's just a chance to get together. We provide hamburgers. We provide main course stuff. We have drinks downstairs. All that we ask is that you bring a side dish and dessert. It'll be about 1, one thirty ish after church here today downstairs in a small fellowship hall because of the rain. And then we'll probably have some games and some things like that in the gym. So everybody is invited. If you don't have a side dish and dessert and you're already here, please stay anyways. We still like a chance just to get together with you guys and just, you know, get everybody a chance to meet each other. These are the kids your kids are going to be with for the next six years for the most part. So you want to know who's going to ruin them or make them do the things that you don't want them to do. That's what we're, that's what we're here to do. So, um, no, it's just a fun chance to get together and we, we hope we can see you all there. Also this evening is, at 6 o'clock is the Canfield Community Concert Band will be coming in at 6. It was supposed to be outside. We're going to be having it inside <clears throat> in the gymnasium downstairs. And afterwards, there will be root beer floats. And Pastor Jan will be mentioning that, uh, a little something on that. Sunfest is coming up. That'll be one of the next bigger things if you guys are wanting to participate in Sunfest adults, teens alike. The tickets are going to be about $15 in advance if I get more than a group of 10. So if you guys need to let me know by, I looked at it, by September 11th, I need to know ahead of time and I need to have the money so they can order as one big group rate. If not, you're going to have to pay $35 at the door and we don't want to have to do that. Um, also, September 17th, <clears throat> Ken Engel Jr. has graciously offered to run a fundraiser for our kids that will be going to NYC. He's had a lot of donations already been taken care of, but there are a few things else, a few other things that we need to have taken care of. And one of them is, the main thing is, I think, 75 packs of hot dog buns. 
So if you are able to pick up hot dog buns, I mean, it, it's the 17th what, what we need them for. So you probably got like two weeks you can wait and then buy them the next week. We don't want them too early because they'll be stale. But if you have the opportunity or if you want to donate, you know, I think it's like two bucks for a pack of hot dog buns, something like that. Um, if you want to donate money, please see Ken Jr. Jr., raise your hand. Everybody knows Ken Jr. Ken will be taking care of that. He'll be running that for us while our kids are celebrating at Sunfest. He graciously said he would do that for us to raise money for these guys to be able to go to NYC. So see him if you can donate hot dog buns or if you have the money that you'll be able to, you want to donate ahead of time. CNC Craft Show is coming up here in November. Uh, please see Elisa Blevins again on that uh, if you're interested. I know she said the spots are filling up. I've seen a lot of stuff on Facebook of who's going to be there. It'll be a fun time. It's always been great downstairs. There's also a huge thank you. A huge thank you is extended to all the people that volunteered on 13th and helped get the hedges and the bushes all trimmed. They look wonderful. Also, a special thank you to the individuals that helped put the sound system together. They did an amazing job. Jenny Smith said, thank you guys all. There will be more projects like that. So keep in mind, there's always a chance for you to do something. And finally, Sight and Sound Pro Productions is presenting David currently and we have an opportunity to live stream it here basically a movie night for you to to get it on a very 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 large discount compared to what it is to go to sight and sound theater and so it's five dollars for adults two dollars for children we will be having concessions and things like that but i asked cody if he could do me a favor and we're going to go ahead and run a quick teaser for you guys for the david trailer I know if you've ever been to Sight and Sound, it's probably going to be a little different, but the opportunity that they give us, this is their current running show. They normally do not air anything that they're currently running. It's usually something that's gone through, they're done with, and they, they're giving us a large opportunity to do this. So I know I've invited a lot of churches from our district, and I know I've got churches from our district that said they're bringing big, big groups in. So if you want to go, at least just kind of give me a heads up. You can pay at the door, you can pay in advance, myself or my wife, uh, however you want to do it, but I'm kind of giving an idea so I know how many people we're kind of going to have to have so I can make sure we have concessions and things like that for everybody. So if you're interested, catch me or my wife afterwards, and I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us, Lord, to be able to share in your message and in your spirit and in your life together, Lord, that you allow us to to gather as family and as community as we sit down and we we just we love on each other dear heavenly father that we just know how much how important each person is individually and collectively in our lives dear lord i pray that you'll just continue to move in the service today as the worship of songs that are brought to us dear lord and the message is delivered through jan but you also give us time just to you know it, it's the meet and greets and it's just the one the one-on-ones that we have lord with you and with each other i pray that you'll just continue to bless us continue to move in this church and in this community lord in your name i pray amen good morning would you would you stand with us as we read god's word ephesians 2:10 for we are God's handwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You know, in that, we, uh, as we are saved, it's not just that we are saved just to be saved and wait for our heavenly home. We are here to do good works in his name. And in those good works, we also bring worship to the Lord. 
uh, I think in all things we should bring glory and honor to God because it is worship in all that we do. And as we are here now, as we sing, bring glory and honor to God and worship him. Mm -hmm. Let us sing. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks. For all you've done, because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Because of your love, as we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up for songs of freedom. Forever we change because of your love, because of your love, we're forgiven because of your love, our hearts are clean, we lift you up. Songs of freedom forever we change because of your love forever we change because of your for that perfect love we all use the term i love you so much or i love this i love that but the true and perfect love only comes from above our love is so flawed and it's it's really hard to actually just love and i think it's just something that's so overused but the only one who can show us that perfect love is our heavenly father and i'm so thankful that we're just here to worship him and just to experience that love that that's almost so foreign to us. So I'm just thankful that we're all here and gathered together. And I'm thankful for all the family and just the love that is in this building and the love and the family that we have. So go ahead and greet one another.
Today is a crappy day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. No, for, for me, that's pretty literal because I woke up to dog crap on the floor and went home to check on mom and I was a little too late for the second time. So, hey, it's okay to shake my hands though because I washed them thoroughly, I promise. So, you know, this morning I was looking up that scripture. Today is the day the Lord has made and I've been texting back and forth with some of you and... Uh, it says, I will rejoice, Psalm 118. But if you read the backstory of that, um, sort of read back, David is decrying the fact that God has basically been punishing him. And he's saying, even though God's making life hard on me, he says, yet he is the cornerstone, the, ch the chief stone, the cornerstone, the, the stone the builders rejected. He is the gate. And he says, I will rejoice. He's opened the gate. He still brought me in. He says, I will rejoice. And my thought was, instead of we always say, today is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice. I want you to add something, okay? Because today has reminded me so far that it has to be a choice to rejoice. Today, it is your choice to rejoice. And I guess the former, uh, but the uh, superintendent, have a good day or not. The choice is yours. So today is the day the Lord has made. I will buy and be glad in it. Amen. So whether the weather is nice or, or crabby, or whether you're nice or crabby, it's all a choice, right? It's all a choice, and we have to make it today. So I'm going to invite at this time um, two things. First of all, I'm going to remind you that um, John is bringing all his 60 of his closest friends tonight for root beer floats. And uh, thanks to uh, Ken Jr., we got all the root beer we need, but there's another important ingredient in a root beer float. You know what it is? Ice cream. So for all of you that said ice cream, uh, here's what I need you to do. Ken is short about uh, 70, 70 packages of hot dog buns, and we're short of completely any ice cream. So... Today, while you're out and about, if you get a chance to run to a store, get a tub, get a half gallon, get a quart, whatever you get, doesn't have to be handles, it could be the cheap, you know, the $5 tub or whatever, but we need some ice cream. So if you grab a pack of hot dog buns and ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and bring it back here, and uh, the gym door is open down there, so you could just go put it in one of the fridges or the freezers in the kitchen. If you put it in the fridge, if you put it in the fridge, we'll have root beer shakes, if you put it in the freezer, we're going to have root beer floats. So uh, if you could do that for us, help us out. I'd appreciate it very much. And by request, I'm going to invite Ray and Sandy to come up before prayer and just share with you just a little bit about what's going on with Sandy because we've all been praying for her. There's lots of other folks here that need our prayers. We're going to anoint some people today. Some through the water, some through the some through the fire, some through the flood, some through the water, but all by the blood. Amen. Sandy was scheduled to go to the Cleveland Clinic for evaluation for a liver transplant. You all prayed for us, and we appreciated that. We we went up on Monday morning. She gets in there Monday morning, the first thing they do is take her back to the lab and take 21 vials of blood out of her. <laughs> twice. <laughs> they had to stick her twice. We go through the doctor's appointments. We meet with surgeons. We meet with uh, liver specialists. We meet with anesthesiologists. We meet with everybody. They do echocardiograms. She gets CT scans. She get, ran through the works for four days. The end of the four days, what we took away is, yes, every doctor was happy that she's going to be able to get a stem cell transplant, and they were recommending it, liver. or liver transplant. Stem cell it was, was, liver is to come. Um, when we went through all of this, 
the biggest thing they told us was her score that they score everything on is an 11. The range is from 6 to 40. The average person that get it, gets a deceased liver is somewhere around 25 in that scoring system. So Sandy has issues, has problems, but she's not sick enough to probably get a liver in the next couple of years. So we prayed about it. We said, Lord, what's going on? Well, the big thing they talked to us about was a living donor. I think we shared a little bit with some of you ahead of time about a living donor. A living donor has to be between 18 and 60, you know, have enough liver to be able to donate and has to be a type O blood type. Sandy's O negative, but it doesn't have to be the negative or positive. So we prayed about that also. And after we went through all of this, we came home on Saturday and I spiked a fever and I hurt like I had never hurt in a long time. I took a COVID test. I came down with COVID. Sandy took a COVID test. She had COVID. So she went and had us had one of those monoclonal antibodies that, again, and we've all recovered significantly. That's one of the reasons we weren't here last week. It was a little too close. So long, you're getting the long version because we didn't want to show the long version with everybody all individually, so we're giving you the whole, <laughs> the, the whole works. So it was, was it this last, a week ago Thursday that they called you? So it was a week ago Thursday they called her and said, okay, they, they have a committee. All the doctors we saw meet once a week on a committee and evaluate everybody for liver transplant to be able to put them on the list. Thursday, Sandy gets a, a week ago Thursday, she gets a phone call from her transplant coordinator, and they say, you're approved to be on the list. There's still three or four things she has to get finalized, you know, before she's officially on the list. And you have to be approved by Cleveland before they'll even start entertaining any living donors, before they'll even start talking to somebody and things like that. I don't think it was within an hour of when this lady had called. Sandy gets a phone call from North Carolina. And she's speaking to Melinda Holsoff. And Melinda's saying, well, how's things going? What's happening? Sandy's telling her everything that's going on. And she says, you know, you know, I need the living donor. They have to be type O blood. They have to be between 18 and 60. And Melinda just kind of looked, or I say looked at her, but she told her, she says, well, she said, tell the doctors to get off their can because I turned 60 in December. And I have type O blood. So that's the amazing part of what's happening. We were blown away. We're going, okay, what's going on? Backstory to this, when Sandy had her stem cell transplant, which is the correct place to put that, Melinda was with her the day she received her stem cells. And Melinda told her, she says, this was the most amazing thing next to having my kids to witness. Basically, they were giving life back to Sandy at that time. So, in the midst of all this, there's still a lot of testing has to goes on, go on. You know, we flat out told Melinda, he says, you better talk to Gary about this, you know, <laughs> and pray about it. But long story short, in the end of December, Melinda is coming to the Cleveland Clinic to basically go through almost all the same tests that Sandy went through in the end of September, to go through most of the tests that Sandy went through to see if she's a match. We're praying. A total match. Her, her blood matches mine, but her, they have to do um, an MRI to make sure that all of her veins and arteries and stuff in her liver will line up with mine. Isn't that just, it's miraculous, you know? That song says, I'm a child of God. There is no doubt no doubt in my heart and my mind that I'm a child of God's. Amen. You know, what, what he has done for me and, and keeps continuing. We, I was at church 
one morning and we were, I was talking with some friends and I had another lady come forward that offered to be my donor. And bless Bonnie's heart, if she didn't have the wedding coming up that she has in 20 days, Bonnie could have very well have been my donor. And you guys just, you don't, I hope that you understand just through hearing us talk what that means. It's given me life back that I didn't have very much of. And so believe me, you know, if there's ever a doubt in your mind, you come, you talk to me. I know, I know that I'm a child of God's. So prayers are that the match happens with Melinda, or if it doesn't, that the Lord's still involved. You know, he's involved in this story. Uh, we all have a story to tell. And this is part of God's plan. And we're praying that this can happen before the end of the year. You know, once this happens, we can get it. I mean, the, the issues that go on, you know, every, every time she has to get drained, you know, is another risk of sticking something in her stomach that can create an infection, which basically is not good. And uh, so we're trying to eliminate the risks and get back to a normal life that you can serve better. You know, we feel, sometimes we feel that trying to serve the Lord, you know, we're hampered by our fears and doubts and, you know, not feeling like getting out of bed in the morning. I mean, that's the, the, the reality of what goes on. But we just praise the Lord that He is there. He's been there since forever, but for us since 2007 when she first got diagnosed with lymphoma. It's been a miracle ever since, and I just praise Him. And uh, we're all looking for those miracles. And, you know, an incredible miracle. There's an opportunity to sort of snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And I know there are others here who wish they had a chance to bring back some. Some of you have experienced incredible losses over the last few years, and we all kind of want to, we love and celebrate that story and, and how God has already saved Sandy's life, not just once. She's probably lost track of the times. And and all of us have had some of those experiences, but some of us have lost those we love, and that's the beautiful thing. And the thing I can testify about Sandy, I remember being in the uh, Salem Hospital. We were somewhere back in the ER. You were getting some tests or something, and we had this conversation where Sandy had said, you know, I'm past the point of fear. Death has no hold on those who are children of God. Amen. And even if we can't preserve this life as long as we want, we don't lose the lives who are gone from us. They are gone from us, but they aren't lost to us. Amen? Because those that we've trusted in the hands of our loving Father, we know that we have that hope. That's the hope that we have. You know, if you ever saw me cut a tree and throw Wayne into a tree, you know you better have the hope of life eternal. If you're hanging around me, um, you know, I've had a few of those scars on me and a few of those things in life, but to be at the point in life and, you know, and I think I'm there, but it was a credible blessing to share enough of this journey with Sandy and Ray to know that that fear is gone. I'm good to stay. I'm good to go. Whatever you have for me, Lord, because leaving this temporary life and it's temporary for all of us this temporary life doesn't hold enough power to keep us from the life that's created within us the moment god seeds the gift of life into us and no matter what we're facing and no matter those that we've lost along the way many are gone from us but they're not lost to us and i want us to hold on to that as well and keep praying for sandy and if 
If you know your blood type and you want to talk to them about that or possibility of being checked out, do it, you know. And people tell me all the time, well, I don't have to church, go to church to be a Christian. And in a very technical sense, I guess I could say maybe there's an argument to be made for that. But not being a part of church, this, this is what church is about. It's sharing life. It's connecting to each other. It's carrying one another's burdens. You know, in Hebrews where he says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. And if you see that somebody isn't here today that, that you miss, call them today. Text them. Let them know. Because the value of church isn't my preaching. It isn't the music. It isn't the quality of whether or not you're kept awake by what goes on up front. That isn't church. This Nothing from this point back this way. That isn't church. Look around you. This is church. This is the value of coming together as a family, as the brothers and sisters of God, to support one another, to put an arm on somebody, to love, to encourage, to be there day in and day out. That is what it means to be the body of Christ, not just people who go to church. Amen? And I'm grateful to be here because I can tell you I'm the pastor, and I can tell you this morning when I woke up on the couch at whatever time it was, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it's raining outside, I can tell you I didn't want to come to church today. I did not. You know, Shelly said, you're the pastor, you got to go. She made me come. Just kidding. But the effort that it takes sometimes to get here, even for me, it's always, it's always worth the effort. And I know I'm grateful that we have Facebook and that we can feed into the homes of people who can't be here. But I will never, you know, I want anybody who's watching online to know, I hope that you make every effort any time you can to gather together with your family here because it's just a different dynamic. It does something different in your spirit and your soul to come together. And for those who are watching who maybe it would be really hard to get here, but sometimes that effort is not for you. It's for those who are here to be blessed by something that God's bringing to you. Church isn't about coming here to get something. It's about coming here together to give. We give our worship. We give our praise. We give our honor. We give our we give our talents, our abilities, just our presence. That's what we come to give. And a huge part of that is prayer. So I'm going to ask Elisa to come forward. I'm going to be praying and anointing Elisa this morning. She's facing some things. i got some others who've been sick, others facing trials and struggles. If you need prayer or if you'd like to be anointed this morning, come over on this side. If you'd like to be anointed, if you just want to come up and pray, come on this side. If you'd like to pray with those who have come, then come on up over here and uh, pray behind those. All right? Lisa, come on up. I'm not going to make her get up, but be praying for Bev because she's been going through some struggles. Jim McLaughlin's been going through a lot of physical struggles in the nursing home. Hugo is facing a lot of trials and struggles. Let's just lift one another up to prayer this morning. Father, thank you for my sister Lisa and all that she does and all that you've done in her life, Lord. I think back to the first time that I got to meet her and Dave, and uh, it wasn't uh, by knocking on their door, it wasn't through a, a revival service, it was through a meal in the fellowship hall where we just sat down and had a meal together. And Lord, I thank you for that meal and for that opportunity and how you've cemented her and Dave and the kids as a part of this family forevermore, not just in this life, but in the life to come. Lord, we are just praying for Elisa right now. I know that she's facing some physical challenges. And Lord, I want to anoint her in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit for this surgery, Lord, and for all that you're going to accomplish through it. I thank you for the doctors, for the anesthesiologists, for the nurses, for the, for the attendants, for the person I'm off of the floor, Lord. I just give you praise and thanks that you are using every one of those lives as a tangible expression of your love and your healing into Elisa's life. Be with her and Dave and the kids in this time of searching and this time of healing, Lord, and help remind them, Lord, that they've never faced any of this alone. And just like Ray and Sandy's story, Lord, you're always not a step ahead of us. You're, all, you're days and months and years ahead of us. For you've already marked all these days out. And in our healing, in our hurting, in our games and even in our losses, you are conspiring to work all things together for our good because we love you and we're called according to your purpose. And we give you thanks and praise for that, Lord. I pray for healing, restoration, strength, and your grace 
in overwhelming measure in Elisa and Dave and Sydney and, De- and Blaze's lives, Lord. And Zoe, Lord, and, and Annie, Lord, and Jordan, Lord. Just be with all of them. Just bring healing and strength and grace and mercy in a powerful way in their lives right now, Lord, we pray. We give you thanks. We give you all the glory and honor. Lord, I lift up Bev to you as she's been going through some physical challenges and facing some things this week. And I just give you praise, Lord, that that you're going to set things straight, not because simply that you've given us the gift of medicine, but because that gift has come from your hands. So all these healings, Lord, whether it's through doctors or techniques, medicines, Lord, we can still give you the praise that you're the provider of it. And we give you praise that you've given us those opportunities, Lord. We give you praise for Sandy and her story of healing and strength, Lord. And and you've given her an incredible help made along this journey. And and you've filled them with your grace, Lord. And I'm reminded of Paul's words that, that even when you choose not to heal, Lord, that your strength is perfected in our weaknesses. So we just give you praise. And I just pray that that you would use Ray and Sandy and Melinda as a testimony to your grace in the lives of every doctor and every person who comes in touch with them through this process, Lord. And if your goal and your plan isn't to use Melinda, we know that you have a plan and you have a purpose and who you're going to choose and how you're going to choose to work. Lord, we, we believe every beat of our heart and every breath of our lungs is a gift from your hands. And Lord, even in our losses, we can give you praise for those who are gone from us are not lost to us. Their presence is still real and tangible and we can feel them with us. And we are reminded, Lord, that we can trust their spirit and their life into your keeping and into your care until we are reunited with them. I just pray for a hand of blessing upon all those who have struggled these last few years. Lord, there's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of hurt. There's been a lot of struggles even now. Lord, financially and so many other ways people are struggling. Lord, we just ask your hand of blessing. Lord, I lift up our nation and our nation's leaders to you. Ask that, Lord Jesus, you would give wisdom and discernment that in these upcoming elections, Lord, that we wouldn't be about parties, but we would be about your spirit. That we, your people, would bow on our knees, cry out, confess to you, and ask that you would heal our land, that you would be the author and perfecter of our faith, that this nation would continue to prosper under your guidance and under your care, Lord. We just give you the praise, the glory, the honor for this time to gather together. I pray for every need and every family and every home represented here, Lord. All the things that we know and all the things that we don't know, the struggles that people right here in our midst are facing that are unknown to us and burdens that are sometimes overwhelming. But you know. And we truly cast those cares on you. For it is by your stripes that we are healed. It is through your sacrifice and your death that we experience life in this life. And not only here, but in eternal life. Lord, we are not afraid to face the grave because it has no power on us. Lord, for you are victorious and that victory spills into our lives through your spirit. We just want to give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor this day, Lord. May your spirit come and overwhelm us and invade this space and this time together. In the beautiful name of Christ, we pray and God's people say. getting better at remembering the order of things and uh, I've got prompts and reminders around me sometimes like guys standing in the back with plates so that helps to remind me that it's time to take the offering and before I do that I did get a call uh, this week from Steve Duckworth and he was sort of panicked he said Jan I just got a I got a bill in the mail and no it wasn't anything I charged at Sam's Club or Home Depot I'm totally not responsible for it. But the level billing of our natural gas bill for the church and the church's properties, the ones that the church pays for, it was going just for the church itself, was about $900 a month. And that's 
level building. That just figures the gas that the church uses, this building, this facility, which we do a lot of great things, amen? We do Upward. We do uh, Hanford Community Band. Kids in the community use the, the gym. It was $900 a month. Ducky got the bill, and for the next year, monthly charges are going up to $1,700 a month. So Steve got on the horn, and he called the gas company. He made some threats, and guess what happened? He show, he goes to court next week. No, just kidding. <laughs> Another thing to pray for. No, he didn't make any threats, but he just said, hey, what's going on? And the only response he got was, well, it was the pandemic. And, you know, am I concerned? Well, I have to consider things, you know. The board's probably going to have to have another meeting. We're going to have to decide, you know, we're, we're down to not much meat on the bone in terms of how we run this operation. This church gets more things accomplished on less money than I guarantee you 90% of churches in the entire United States of America. The things you, we accomplish because people volunteer and give help, you know, just even like the the... This sound desk and everything back here, that was 100% no expense to the church. Not because it didn't cost anything, but because some people who shall remain nameless, who might have built it, are probably buying some of the materials. Uh, Phil dropped off a bunch of materials out there that was scrap and firewood to anybody else, but it went into that. And uh, so those things get done, not because there's not a need, not because there's not expense, but we get things done. But... To move forward, this is pretty significant for us. Um, this basically wipes out all the money we saved through the finance, re- refinance, and pretty much all the money we've saved by changing the insurance, which it basically eats up almost everything we had saved in monthly expenses over the last six months. So what's that mean? This isn't a scare tactic. This isn't twist your arm. This is you guys need to know because one thing I've tried to tell Steve and I, I've told every finance person, I tell the board all the time, it isn't our responsibility as a few individuals to bear, carry the weight of these things that, you know, if you just show up on a Sunday, you don't know what it took to get the bushes trimmed, to get the thing built, to get the bills paid. I mean, so we, we're in this together, amen? And, but if you don't know, you don't know how to pray, so maybe you could be praying. I don't know, I don't even know how to tell you to pray, you know? Um, I probably shouldn't be praying that somebody wins the lottery, although every one of you told me that if you win the lottery, the first thing on your list is about a million dollars to the church. So it's kind of just kidding. You know, so God doesn't need us to get 10 more jobs. God doesn't need us to win 10 lotteries. God just needs us to trust him and to be faithful with what he has entrusted to us. Amen. Little is much is an old song when, when God is in it. And it's never about what we give that God uses to meet needs. It's about the attitude in which we give. It really is. And so this morning, I invite you as the ushers come just in an attitude of love and faithfulness to God as you give today. If you're online, cncfamily.com.net. cncfamily.net, there's a giving tab in there under resources. You'll find it. Uh, if you, if all else fails and you don't know, I'll give you, call me, personal message me, I'll give you Steve's address or his phone number. He'll come and get the check from you, no matter where you are. So, alright, so, uh, and I'm grateful for, let me brag on your church board. Your church board is very faithful to pray and they're very faithful to be good stewards of what, what they're entrusted with. It's, it's a little hard to draw blood from a turnip, as the old saying goes. But your church board, if anybody can get blood from turnips, I have confidence Jenny Smith can do that. Amen. And all the rest of the church board helping her. So ushers, come forward this morning. Let's be faithful to the Lord in our tithes and offerings. Ken Jr., would you please pray for the offering?
Still love that song. I like it even better when I see Jane signing it, though. Well, if you think I'm going to be done preaching on time, it's too late. My time's already gone, but if with your permission, I'll try to make this brief to 1128. I'm not going to be done at 1130. I can promise you that. <laughs> but, Cody, you need to get a big clock back there so I can see it, so I can at least be done, you know, maybe in 15 minutes. We'll see. So, uh, I'm not out of First Peter this week. Changed my mind. The Lord did a little bit this week. I'm going to talk about rocks. Rocks that don't roll. Um, some of you noticed somebody went wild and crazy out in front of our church sign during VBS. I don't know if you noticed that. I don't know how most churches decorate, but our church decorates with dump trailers and skid steers. Can I get an amen? So why am I bringing this up? Because I've been really slow to take down my rock formation, and many of you are familiar with the rock formation in England called Stonehenge. And in case I didn't tell you, I've told some of you, I've called my creation unhinged. Because... It sort of fits where I'm at in my mental capacities these days. So I was in the yard, I don't remember, like a week or two weeks ago, and a car pulled up because they saw me out with the trimmer in the yard, called me over, I recognized it's a neighbor from the neighborhood, and she said, what is the scriptural meaning of those rocks over there? I didn't have the heart to tell her, it was just my weird sense of creativity. She doesn't know me that well yet. So uh, she says, I know there's something in Scripture about rocks. And she says, I'm sure that's because she said that some other people have asked me. She says, I look at that every time I go by here. And I think to myself, what's the purpose? What's that for? But she said, I know it has some spiritual, significant, scriptural, you know, purpose. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a guy playing with rocks and a skid steer. But maybe the Lord was speaking through her because my mind did go to a passage that deals with rocks, a pile of rocks, and it's in Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4, starting with verse 4. Let me lead up to this. They'd wandered in Israel for 40 years. The Lord had told Moses, you're not going to lead the people. Joshua is. And and uh, they'd been going through a hard time. And God told Joshua, he says, we're going to go <coughs> across the Jordan, but I got some instructions for you. And it was during harvest time, and it mentions several times the Jordan River they were about to cross was at flood stage. I don't know how many of you have looked at the flooding down in parts of the U.S. and definitely in Kentucky. Imagine for a moment that you're on foot, and you're about to, as a nation, cross over this flooded river. And that's where we kind of pick this up. So Joshua called together the twelve men that he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future. When your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed into the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Joshua set up the twelve stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. So those rocks might be there while well, just tell me. The church, CNC, the church everyone used to go to. I've said that a lot in 27 years of being here, almost 24 years. But that in itself is a part of the memorial of this church. So many lives have been touched. You know, I don't want to say it's through the stupid things, but sometimes God reminds me that just by doing the thing he gives us to do today, it's a part of how he's going to touch and impact the lives 
that he brings our way. And whether it's driving a bus, yes, I passed my bus driver physical again. Lord only knows how. They only had to take my blood pressure once. That has never happened in over 12 years of driving bus. I've never had, I've always had the nurse look at that blood pressure thing and go, hmm. And I've usually followed up by how bad is it. I don't think I've gone to the, get my bus driver physical without having to lay in a dark room to relax, to bring my blood pressure down enough to pass. And because it's a lot of pressure, right? I mean, I got white coat syndrome and I also happen to have high blood pressure. Now, I'm not going to say that I might have cheated by taking extra pills the day before, but whatever happened, all I know is that it was a reminder to me, okay, this is something for you to do. Now, Shelly isn't thrilled because school starts Wednesday, and guess who called me last week? Transportation director saying, hey, what are you doing on Wednesday? But you know... I get to see some lives because I drive a bus. That mean a lot to me. Because whether people say, yeah, I've been to that church. I went to that VBS. You remember when you had that rope bridge and we all got our picture taken on that crazy rope bridge? Now, if our insurance company thinks a swimming pool is dangerous to have on church property, I'm sure glad they didn't see videos of our VBS program last year. Or just about any year that we've had VBS. Amen? (laughs) But those lives, from the simplest thing of building a rope bridge, building a lagoon in the church, putting four tons of sand in, or building rocks out in front of the church sign, those are memorials that we have laid to touch lives. And it's okay that everyone doesn't come here today. The question is, are we touching the lives that God gives us to touch in the days leading to this day? And when I look at those rocks out there, and I got a perfect view of them from here, and 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 I'm thinking about the night that I had to turn the lights on the skid. It was so late, and VBS had already started, so it was already too late. But I didn't care. I was brought, got those rocks up at the old lakefront. I was going to use them. By golly, and I had the two up, and I had a nice big flat piece on top. And I'm trying to set that one in the middle that you see up there. But what you don't see is I, it fell off the backside into the flower thing there. Fortunately, I was able to put the rocks back behind it. But when it fell and the other thing collapsed, it broke my big piece in half. So then I had this little piece. So then, of course, most people would give up. But I'm thinking, no, I can do it. I can make it work. So I'm manhandling on the rocks and using my skid to put it, delicately put it up on there, got that to sit, and put those pieces around there. And when I look at it, it wasn't my intention when I did it. But when I look at it, now I look at it and it reminds me. reminds me of God's provision. Why did they take the rocks from the... And they took them right where the ark was. If you haven't read that, the the guys carrying the ark, and I mean, it, it was made out of... covered in gold. I mean, that ark had to be incredibly heavy. Literally, there, God says, I want you to just walk straight into the middle of that flooded river with this great big heavy thing on your shoulders. Just go do it. And if you read the scripture, it says, when the first priest in front of the line, when his foot touched the water, he stepped into the edge of the water. When he touched the water, the water split. It piled up up upriver. It ran away down river. And it says they walked straight out in the middle of that river and stopped in the middle. And as long as they stood there, the water was stopped and all the people crossed on dry land. And those rocks were to remind the Israelites, your God hasn't forgot about you. It took 40 years, 40 years. If you read on down after they cross, you'll find out everyone who doubted the Lord when they left Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, none of the people who crossed the Red Sea, not one of those people, crossed the Jordan River. Why? Because they doubted the God who provides. And so he said, then you're on your own. And even when they their doubt, he provided them clothes that didn't wear out. He provided manna. He provided meat. He provided water from rocks. He provided, but the people on the other side of the Jordan that day were all people who were born in those 40 years. 
So basically, other than like Moses and Joshua, everybody was under the age of 40 who crossed the river that day to, to get to the other side. And so God said, set up a memorial, set up those rocks, because they were all 40 and under, so they were going to have a lot of babies in the future. And he said, in the future, when your children say, what's that pile of rocks doing over there? Why is that pile of rocks there? Then you can tell them, it's a reminder of us that God provides. And can I tell you today, whatever rock you got to look at, God provides. Remember a few weeks ago I was talking about the rock that I found out here? Give thanks. Every time, I, you know why I leave this up here? So that when I get up on Sunday morning to preach, and Ducky's called me the week before and said, Oh yeah, by the way, the gas bill's gone up double. I still know I can give thanks. When my dogs are sick, it's been a rough rough week in our house. You know, Kyrie has a had a bad um, diagnosis. And I don't know what's going on with him right now, but I've been doing a lot of cleaning up. And if anybody has pets or small children, you can know, right? There's only so much vomit and out the other end that you can clean up before you start really getting sick of a really crappy job. Amen? Right? And yet in the midst of that, God gives us that rock to look at in our lives that reminds us, hey, you can still give thanks. Hey, God's still providing. He's still, he's not done with us yet. And a part of our memorial of a church is that I look back and I see, see, I get the privilege of meeting people. And when they find out I'm the pastor of the Nazarene church, nobody can find the church, but they all know, they've heard of it, they know about it. The Nazarene, oh yeah. My grandparents went there. Oh, I went to VBS there. Oh, yeah, I was part of youth group there. Oh, yeah, I played upward there. Oh, yeah, I used to take my car to the car show. Oh, yeah, I saw you guys at Joy of Christmas. Oh, yeah, I remember the tray that you put from a VBS and you decorated it with Christmas lights and you put it in the Christmas parade. I remember meals, eating meals there. I remember you provided a meal for my family when we lost someone. Um, yeah, I went to Heartland when it was in that school, when it was in that church. I, that's where we had our wedding. That's where we had a funeral. We had baptism, dedicated, and so much more. Even today, with this lousy weather, we're having a teen parent picnic and the Canfield Community Band on the same day. Who does that? <laughs> Amen? But that's why we're the church that everyone's not used to go to, but everyone has been to because God keeps using the memorial of your lives sometimes God speaks to me in mid-sermon and I forgot this earlier he said you are living stones and I don't know when I'm going to get those rocks down because honestly it was a lot of work and I'm kind of proud of it and I hate to take them down because now people can find the Nazarene church like, oh, that one with that big sign that says monumental and those rocks in front of it? Yeah, that one. That's where it's at. Oh, yeah, I've seen that a thousand times. Good. That's where we're at on Sunday mornings. Come see us. You know, if I've said to one person, I've said to a thousand. Come see me at work sometime. You know what they usually say? Where do you work at? They call me Pastor Jan and they still don't know where I work. <laughs> but... We are the living stones. We are the memorial that God has set up in this community. And even when I take those rocks down, even when the sign's gone, people are going to know something about who God is in our lives. Why? Because God has placed you as living stones, as memorials in their lives. And when times are hard, when things are tough, and when the news isn't good, and the hurt is deeper than we can even begin to express, God has placed memorials of living stones in the lives of the people of Columbiana in order that they can look at you and future generations to come can look at you and your lives and your kids' lives and your grandkids' lives and say, what is it about, the, what's that mean? What's that life mean? Why are those people in my life? Why are they here? Why? Because God has placed a memorial of his provision in the lives of this community and he's placed them in our lives. So this morning... I wanted to, uh, you know, I want to tell you, if you can't tell, I wear my heart on my sleeve, so it's not hard to figure me out. 
I cry a lot. I get emotional a lot. I feel bad every time I look at TV or watch something on TV and they're making fun of emotional men because I'm like, dang, I'm pretty emotional. I've been looking at that pile of stones now since that neighbor stopped in a little different way. It's become a monumental memorial to me. I see that word monumental and I see those stones and I think, wow, that's a testament to who God is in my life. It's a testament about who I need him to be in my life. Psalm 51, David's words. He's remembering his sin and his sinfulness. And he's crying out to the Lord. And David says in Psalm 51, 7 through 12, Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me. And I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Listen, folks. David says it point blank. God, you've laid a weight on me. The weight of my life, the weight of my sin, the weight of my relationships. It has crushed me, but let these crushed bones rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and block out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And this is my verse today. Restore to me. I cry a lot for a guy who's asking for God's joy. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. When the news isn't good, give me joy. When the weight is heavy, give me joy and your strength. Grant me a willing spirit. Grant me a heart that doesn't give up. Paul said, let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not give up. Why? Because he said at just the right time you'll reap a harvest of righteousness. At just the right time. What is the path that you're on today? Is there a raging river in front of you at flood stage? Is God saying, go ahead, step into the rage, step into the river, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Why does David ask for a willing spirit to sustain him? Because it takes a lot of grit to walk into a raging flood when you know God's told you to do it. Amen? Is your faith in danger of being swept away? If these days and if these times can't endanger your faith, I don't know what it would take. I don't want to be around when I see the thing that makes you to say, man, this is scary stuff. Because I think when I look around, we're living in scary stuff. I think we're living in a culture of division, of anger, of depression. I mean... I'm not decrying things, you know, it's not that bad, but this morning I felt like when I woke up, I'm like, you can just almost feel the oppressiveness between the weather, and it's not just the weather, it's just an oppressiveness, amen? There are people facing struggles and weights that seem like it's crushing their bones, like David said, it's a crushing weight, and yet David's saying, God, I'm going to trust in you, God, I'm going to look at the memorial of those stones. I'm going to remember that no matter what I'm facing, you've made a way. Not only will you make a way, you have made a way. So if you're facing a crisis of faith today, if you feel like the river's too deep, if you feel like the current's too strong, I'm going to invite you to lay it all at the feet of the one, the God who makes a way. And if you doubt, and if you doubt, that God can make a way. Take a look at the memorials in your midst. There are people sitting here today that are testaments 
and testimonies to God's sustaining grace. There are people, not the least of which is Ray and Sandy, that have faced situations that would make people want to just throw their hands in the air and say, I give up, I quit. But step by step by step, there's a path. And every time, just like the phone call from Melinda, we don't know how that's going to work out. But no matter what you're facing, if you can sort of turn that focus and say, oh, okay, Daddy, I need a little reminder that you're here. I need a reminder that you're going to grant me the peace and the grace and the strength and the path. God will make a way. Amen? There's memorials in your life. And when you leave here today, take a second look at those stones. They could be gone next week. We'll see. i got to get Jenny Smith's permission as building's ground director to leave them up. So when she tells me to take them down, when they're gone, you'll know it's Jenny's fault. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. One day I'll get a I'll get a wild hair and I'll just take them down. You know how it is. But until then, every time I look at those stones, I'm going to say, God, thank you for reminding me that you've made a way. I never should have come to this church in 1998 as a youth pastor. Why? I was young, inexperienced, stubborn, and and. And there's a thousand reasons why I shouldn't have moved 250 miles from home. You know, Shelly and I spent our first night in our middle house on the porch with my arm around her and both of us crying our eyes out. What did we do? But God made a way. God had a way. We've raised our sons here as a part of this family. And there's no regret in that. When they asked me if I wanted to be pastor of this church in 2001, you know what I said? Are you crazy? <laughs> I've been going to that church since 1998. What does it matter, you nuts? I see how they chew up pastors. I had people tell me after I was voted on to be the pastor of this church, I had several of our senior adults come to me and say, I just want you to know, I didn't vote for you to be pastor of our church. <laughs> but you know Why? They said, I love you, and I didn't want you destroyed. They didn't vote for me because they loved me, and they were afraid that it would be so heavy and so burdensome. They didn't know how thick-headed and stubborn I was. But those of you here now, you know, God made a way when no one else could see a way, including me. And now I get to enjoy the fruits of his labors in my life. And every time I look at those stones or your faces, there's a memorial in my life that reminds me God will make a way. Amen. I've asked the praise team to come and to sing that song, Waymaker. I heard it on the radio this week, and I'm like, God said, that's, that's what you got to play. So if you want to pray... If you're facing the burdens of life and you need a way maker, you've got one here. Come to the altars and pray and I'll wrap us up. I'll get you out in time for 15 minutes of life groups and then time to run and get some hot dog buns and ice cream and get back here so we can party the rest of the day. Amen? Amen. Join with the praise team as they lead us. Why don't you stand with us as we sing it? Go away. 
good promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here.
sick and sick animals or sick loved ones, Lord, that your spirit, Lord, there's nothing that can be taken from us, Lord, that we trust your hand, that, that you lead us through some dark paths in our lives. You don't shield us from the harshness of life, but you guide us through it and give us the hope that the day is coming when the night shall never come upon us again. No sickness will exist. There'll be no more loss. And those that we've who have gone from us and will be reunited again and we just look forward to those days and that hope that exists in every one of our lives as we trust our lives into your care and your keeping. I just pray your grace upon us this day and all those who are here, all those who are facing struggles, Lord, be with us as a board, be with us as a church, be with us as your sons and daughters. Give us wisdom and discernment as we seek to live lives as living stones, as living memorials to your love, to your grace, to your provision so that we can be a testimony to all those others, Lord, who are still struggling in the dark to find a way. May our lives reflect the light of your love, and may it become a lamp to them that draws them into the fullness of the presence of your Spirit in their lives. And Lord, no matter whether they touch this body, this family, for a few days, a few years, or just for a few moments, may they be left with a lingering memorial of your love and of your grace and be drawn to know more of who you are and to accept you fully into their lives, Lord. We just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor this morning, and we praise you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dispersed to go know the fullness of the Lord's grace in your life. He's made a way. Now follow it.